Hello, hello, Ndegwa. Hi, Makanaka. Hello, Irma. Hey, Troy. Oh, my God, James. <laughs> Thank you so much, neighbor. I'll try to play myself down a little bit later this evening. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Miss Thing. How are you? How are you? I'm well. Mm. Let's wait for a bit more of the tribe to come through and then we can discuss this baby. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm blocking it enough so I can do this. I can do this. This is what we're reading, guys. This is what we got. Let me get my copy. Yo. There we go. How is, that? How is it that time in Kenya, though? Are you still in uh, under street lockdown? Mm -hmm. We're not. Well, not that well, we can buy alcohol. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> That's some people. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I'm getting used to the non-alcoholic stuff. I'm just like so over the alcohol thing. It's like been so long. Yeah. <laughs> at, 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 this, at this point in time, you'll all be addicted to tea. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, is so, that is so true. But yeah. You know how like you know how like like um uh, some people have hangovers. You'll mm -hmm. be like you'll be like those those old women in Zim back in the day would be like, Yo, I've got a headache, I haven't had tea. Like <laughs> <laughs> just be like ah. in the morning she'll be like mm -mm, I haven't had tea in the <laughs> so guys, you know, do the thing, do the right thing. And it has to be that tea, <laughs> the one that's boiled in the on the fire or in a black kettle, and it's 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 very rich. <laughs> and then you have to drink it in a jumpy, you know the the metal cup. Yes. You have to. You know they the put those things on grapes. You know they put those things on grapes. <laughs> so that's I only found out why they do it now. Uh -huh. Like when you go to the village and you see the like in Zim, you you see the you see the plates, mm -hmm. and you see the the cups and stuff and everything. Apparently, it's because um, you know the deceased would have liked drinking from that, from that oh. from that cup, <laughs> or, 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 or eaten from the from from the plate. So in their next life, they'll be having whatever. And you know, I didn't realize how important this was because. When we're kids and we'd go kumusha, we'd just put like, we'd, we'd take those, we'd use them for, for, make, for doing my womb way, you know? It wouldn't make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> and now in retrospect, when we're using the cups to make like, you know, sand and water for the deceased. I, yo, anyway. <laughs> I hear you. Mm. Then you can actually still use a metal cup. They carry more. They carry more than even these mugs because those ones are large, hey. Yes, they are. But the only problem is you have to blow the cup and the tea. Like it's it's another thing. <laughs> you, you're a woman with children. Why is blowing a problem for you? Ah, uh -uh, guys, no, no, man. Uh -uh, you know? <laughs> anyway. We're discussing this. <laughs> Perfect imperfections. All right. Can you read something, uh, Makanaka, to kick us off? Okay. I will just read um, from the very first few pages. I'll read August 2005. Okay. Um, I was a happy 15-year-old girl. 
full of life with the dream of one day going to the city to study to be a teacher. Unlike my peers, I loved school despite the fact that it was two hours away. I did not care that the school was made up of a tiny office block, two windowless classrooms for the A-level students and a few Musasa tree, trees scattered around the bounds with old blackboards stuck on their trunks on which all the knowledge I had accumulated thus far had been scribbled with white chalk. I did not take to heart the remarks of teachers like Miss Pararai, a science teacher who felt doing art subjects, English, history, and yeah. Shona was a complete waste of time. She would say, Kutueta ma'az. Miss Pararai was convinced that all of us doing these subjects were going to end up being traditional healers and believed we were, we were better off going to the river and getting captured by mermaids. After school, I used to go to the boho, fetch water for the house, gather firewood, make a, uh, take a bath in the river, then rush home to assist my mother with cooking supper for the family. I did this almost daily. And unlike everyone else around me who seemed content with the tedious repetition and routine, I felt there was much more to life than being within the confines of Michiru Mutatu. I did not aspire to be married off to a man living in a brick house like most girls did, or hope to get a job in the nearby farms or mines like most boys did. I wanted to take my chances, go to the city and build a better life for myself. In my mind, every sunrise and sunset meant I was a step closer to my dream. But this all changed on 18 August 2005, the day my father's youngest sister, Aunt Dorica, died from malaria. I'll end there. Do you want me to continue? <laughs> That's absolutely fine. And uh, malaria is significant because, you know, we've got that doctor from... Hey, Nigerians, why? Why? <laughs> Who's telling us that you can cure COVID with, COVID. you know? So anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I think malaria is very significant there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing what's interesting about perfect imperfections um and particularly why i put it in this particular season is she gets married i'm not giving anything away guys she gets married to her uncle's um to her aunt's aunt's husband you know as as another wife uh to take to take her aunt's place which is something that um is is still common in quite a lot of our societies, Kumuta Mafiwa, you know, and, um, and then, but she wanted to go to school and she stays there and, and she gets married to this guy. And, but later on she escapes. So why didn't she just do that in the first place? Okay. I, I know. Cause I think I've had people like literally saying to me, why did she have to stay for 12 years? So the, the first thing, is, this is a 16-year-old, right? So she, she, there's, she, what a dream. So she, she, she knows that there's this place. She doesn't know much. She doesn't have, I think, life experience. Um, and because um, the society or her parents, everyone around her besides herself. So she's the only person who knows about this dream. But everyone around her, the society, the culture has dictated this. So she gets into it because now it's, what has been dictated to her this is what has been handed to her she doesn't know any better so as much as she had any she had dreams if the situation were better and she had been left to finish school maybe she would have escaped but because now that is the situation she was caught in she doesn't know any better and i think because she hadn't experienced life the what made her she knew what she wanted but after 12 years of experiencing a certain life it also pushed her um, even though okay. she didn't know anything. At 16, she doesn't know anything. She hasn't experienced anything. At 28, she has experienced. And now she knows that if I stay, this is what's going to happen. This is going to be my life for the rest of my life. So I think at 28, it made sense that she would leave because now she knows what she's in for. Um, okay. Yeah. And she's older. So that's why. <laughs> that makes absolute sense. Um the father, the father is like, he's like, yeah, no, stay. But then later on, he's, he's supportive. Is it, 
why was he sending her back the whole time but then now like when she escapes by herself like i wanted to shake that father i wanted you know i actually wanted to give like i wanted i'm going to use an expression that i shouldn't choose because the person who said it is triggering but i'm going to mm-hmm. give it anyway like what i wanted to do with mm-hmm. with with the father and all the patriarchy by the by the court you know um is just like give them like just go to them nesha muine munyu and just beat everybody up you know yeah. because they're like, very upsetting yeah yeah you know yeah. but i i also couldn't help and i remember i sent you a message about this when i was reading the book i couldn't i couldn't help um but um make comparisons of that that court that court situation with my nina's court situation in nervous conditions when she just like just goes in and she's like take shoe and she just pulls them by the ears and just like she's just like have you seen me riding uh, you know like that like i just laughed i started thinking about that when i was reading your story <laughs> yeah so what were you thinking about when you were writing that because that's what triggered for me like i, I think for me when i started writing the book the characters kind of like took over because i knew mm-hmm. i had this this story and and the story of maxine how it started it's it's a story that stayed with me for a very long time because at when i was 16 i actually had an experience with with a person who actually experienced that so it's a story that wow. i i stayed with for a very long time and i think when i started writing it it kind of like started taking its own shape So I was imagining I I I kind of like I asked my dad like how does this whole situation work because unfortunately my my grandmother who was a great storyteller would have been the best person to explain to me exactly what happens in these courts. So I I kind of like had to um piece what my father was telling me and you know kind of like imagine how it would have felt for someone who left the village and because remember when she, when even when she's in town she's still wondering what's happening in the village she's like oh my gosh the people are still thinking of me as this evil person so as much as she's free she's still very much uh, tied down in 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 the village i think she her demeanor changes when she's in the village because she she kind of like she's she's afraid but the fact that now she's a bit empowered um it kind of like gives her the the the, the The, 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 a little bit of power and she, because now her father she knows that her father is on her side and i think why i made why the father kind of like changed sides because he was outnumbered remember in this village the father is poor mm. he does not have mm. he doesn't he doesn't even have cows so he doesn't have agency he doesn't even yeah so for him it's all the uncle <laughs> for this situation he's the only he didn't want the mother is It's, we've got a girl child we need to, you know we need her away so that we can have food. he has he has thousands of dollars that he has been i think the odds are kind of like against him and when the daughter then comes out because i i feel sometimes even our parents as much as um a lot of times i would go and i would say to my dad oh my gosh my marriage is not working he would say go back but if i come and i say i have decided to leave i think there is power even for him he's a bit empowered because he knows that you know what you want but because maxine didn't know what she wants everyone is for this marriage with senior or senior wants money they need money everyone is against him i think he felt desperation also played a part in the father letting her go um the uncle's greed um um them not having anything to give to senior if you had said okay fine your 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 sister didn't give me any children so what are you going to how are you going to pay me back so i think desperation played a lot of um a, a big role in the father letting her go but i think if he had seen how much she didn't want it because i think the mother is the one who saw that side of it the father <laughs> did it even the time that she used to cry I, um she usually would go and cry to the aunt who would say don't stay but she always went back so i think sometimes it's if i'm the one who's going to cry to you say zukiswa i'm in in big trouble and then after a few days i go back I, what power do you have do you understand so it oh. doesn't give you 
power. So you, you yourself, you need Makanaka to come and say, Zikiso, this is what I've decided. I'm not going back. And then now you at least have know that Makanaka is not going to go back. I'm not going to two days later say, you know what, Zikiso, sorry, bye, I'm out. So I think that, that, that was kind of like the situation where also the father, as much as he felt for his daughter, she, she always found a way of going back. Uh, whether it was fear, whether it was... And I, I kind of like... Um, I sympathized with him a lot. <laughs> Believe it or not, I did. Um, because I, I just... Mm. I, I feel like there's a lot of... Desperation does a lot of things to people. So, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure whether it's my sound... What are you drinking, though? That doesn't look like uh, tea. <laughs> it's grape juice. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's my sound, but I can't hear you quite as clearly as I was hearing you before. Are you serious? Hello? Are you hearing me now? I can hear you now, but not as... As clearly. Yeah, but anyway, let's, let's do this. Okay, all right. On a serious note, um, we have... Um, okay, all right. Firstly, journeys. Um, Am I am I correct in 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 assuming that um, Mr. Makanaka Mavengere, the dude known as Msaka, is Zambian? Yes. He okay. Is. So you're Zimbabwean. Uh, your partner is Zambian, and you're staying in South Africa. Tell us about that journey. Okay. So for Makanaka, it was very. It was a lot of changes. I'm used mm. to a way of doing things in Zimbabwe. Like I'm, 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 language wise, everything is I, I, it's everything that I know. So when I moved to Zambia, it's a completely different uh, situation. The language is different, even the way we speak English. Because I say back and they say back. So if I if I'm mm. asking some directions, it's like, oh, you're from Zimbabwe. Automatically, I was always like the sore thumb. So language wise, it was it was very. I, I found I found myself like on shaky ground because I found myself staying in a house with, um, cause I stayed with my in-laws for a bit and my mother-in-law spoke one language. My father-in-law spoke another. So even for me to mm. learn, it was chaos at work. They a spoke disaster. Remember. On the streets, they spoke, they, they spoke Nyanja. My grand, my mother-in-law spoke Lozi and my father-in-law spoke Tonga. So I was just like, even when I tried to speak, everyone would just laugh. So my confidence, my confidence suffered a lot. Um, because every time I would speak, it's, there's a bit of everything. Because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to impress. I'm trying to say, okay, how do you say what? What's the time? And then I'm told how to say what's the time in, in Bemba. And then now when I go home and I'm like, and then they're like, no, but that's like just speaking Bemba. And I'm like, okay, fine. How do you say? So that was, and the culture itself, I had to go through the training you know, the training. <laughs> I had to go through the training. Which so did you have to do a lot of church? This was Zambia. Okay, so I think the one thing, the biggest thing that I, I, I my biggest thing it was, I'm, I, was uh, I was born at a Dutch Reformed Church. We go on Sunday. And then when I went to Zambia, it's, it's um, Seventh-day Adventist. So that was like, yeah. So I remember on Christmas Day, um, we, I went to, we went to church. It was a Saturday. And then I remember the guy says, uh, it's a special day today. Like, so who can tell me what the day is? And for me, I was just like, duh, it's Christmas. Duh, and Christmas? Then, yeah, because for Christmas, why are you asking what special day it is? And then my mother looked kept like nudging at me, do not lift your hand up, <laughs> you know? And then only <laughs> the seventh day. They do not lift up. <laughs> I was literally going like, no, don't do it, don't do it. And then the, the person who who answered was like, oh, today is a special day because it's Sabbath. And then they went off on that tangent, like they mentioned nothing about Christmas. And I think that was another big change because I was used to my parents. We put on, like, we put up those decorations. We've got a Christmas tree. There was nothing. They don't celebrate it. So it was a lot of changes. And then when I came to South Africa, back to the way that it is in Zim, where Christmas is a big thing. But the language, again, now I'm back to zero, where now I have to start learning all of these languages. You get there, you have to greet people. I struggled with that. Like you get in at the taxi and you're just like, 
I'm trying to go to Sandton. And then everyone would just look at you like, did you greet anyone? And I'm like, okay, sorry. Hello. And they're like, who is this person? Why are you speaking in English? We're in Alexandra. Why are you speaking in English? So I, I struggled yeah. a lot. I walked a lot. I didn't have a car, so I okay. walked a lot. Now the taxis, they would, not be that, they would not give me the right directions because I wasn't speaking their language. So I think the, 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 the change is I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the different cultures. But yeah, Humanity, it was a, yeah. Yeah, it was a very interesting journey. Um, a lighter question. You, I, I noticed when you, when you talked about going to Zambia and people said uh, bark and you said back. Mm -hmm. did, did you go to the same private school as Remy? <laughs> because he's the one who polices people's pronunciations. <laughs> you know what? I got a lot of people every time, like, I'll pick up the phone and I'm like, uh, need your, your tax. And then they were like, no, tax. And I'm like, no, tax is the same thing. Okay. So I ended up just saying, we meet in spelling. Like, that was my thing. Okay, guys, we meet in spelling. You know what I'm talking about. You say tax, I say tax. It's the same thing. Like, let's move on. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, what else? What well, were uh, right? Um, obviously, um, you have also been uh, involved in uh, you, in a bit of social activism in the last week. You you signed the letter that we did uh, for 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 the AU, the open letter for the AU, and. Um, and uh, on the arrest of Hopo Chingono, and then the very next day, Titsidangaremba, who thankfully is now on bail, got arrested. Mm -hmm. What has it meant to you as a Zimbabwean watching this from the outside? What's what's going on, um, and, and 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 the turmoils and stuff and everything? Do you sometimes just get into a space where you're like, "Wow, um, I wish I were there," or you know, so that there's something I could do, or maybe it's a good thing that I'm not there, so that I wouldn't be that that person who's sitting in Garemba. Or you know, what is going on right now? How are you feeling over everything that's happening in Zim, and you're just next door? To be very honest, I think for me it's more of I'm glad I'm not there, and and experiencing where you have to watch everything you say. Like even if I was just saying, I, I was talking like if I was just talking about my book but i'm not talking about my book and i say you know what people need to you know you 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 have to be your own hero i say something as simple as we have to be our own heroes and then you get someone just reads it as if i'm trying to start something else but i think for me i always i'm always makanaka I was let me let me sorry yeah. sorry to interrupt uh sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. let me makanaka sorry to interrupt you are not very clear at the moment. Let me uh, log you out and then bring you back in again. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to put... Uh, okay, where is she? Hi, everybody. I'm just waiting for Makanaka to come back again because she was not very clear. So as soon as she's back in, we will get on with this. Yes, Alman Alicia, I was talking about the NML Cup, the infamous. It's not Zimbabwe 5G, BC. She's in South Africa. I think she's in Cape Town. I don't think she's in South Africa. Hey, guys. Can you hear me now? Ah, you see, your picture is much better. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. I think it was my Wi-Fi. 
Okay, no, it's okay. We understand. Are you in Cape Town? I'm in Joburg. I'm in Joburg. Because South Africa is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right. But back to our serious question. I, I wanted to know your perspective as an exile regarding what's happening in Zim. Yeah, so for me, I think I'm more, re I'm relieved that I'm not there um, because for me, it's like anything you say can be used against you. It can be a, an innocent statement as me saying, you know what, guys, we need to be our own heroes. No one is going to come and save us. And I'm just talking about my book. Like literally, I'm just talking about Maxine and what happened. And I just make that kind of comment. And next thing I'm arrested, like it can be anything. And I, I yeah, it's, it's, it's scary. When I was in Zim in January, um, I was always like, it's not that you, 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 you don't, you don't feel the, the, the tension like that, but you really have to watch, um, what, what you, say, you say, say it all and what time. you do. Yeah. And what you do. So, uh, it's, like you can't, you can't just, you can't just like make, make casual conversation. Like you used to be able to on, on the ETs and stuff. Right. Exactly. Because well, people just. Actually, also, now they don't even have the combis at all. <laughs> yeah. And then people just go all, all silent to you. And then you're the one who's left, like, now. And then you don't know who's a C. I, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm on the outside right now. Um, yeah. Mm. Duduzi, I see your comment uh, on... on, on um, Dudu, um, uh, Tabo, I see your comment on Dudu's Matutu's... A uh, nephew, twenty-two-year-old nephew who got um, who got kidnapped. Uh, I, I also just got the news. I think it was yesterday that he's been released, but he was beaten up so badly, so he's in hospital. So you know, that is the situation. And of course, um, right now, Makanaka, you're in a country that's um, embroiled in an um, COVID scandals. Yeah. So Cyril, who's the AU chair, cannot even. You know, cannot even be speaking about something else because he's so worried about his own problems, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate. Um, it but, okay, I think we must come back to perfect imperfections. You got some crazy women in here. I know. I know. <laughs> So my question is, you know, there's always one of the things that I really loved is about how you put the mythical, um, because there are certain things that only ever happen in, in, in that only Africans sometimes believe in. Everybody else thinks, oh, oh, my God, you're so superstitious. I know. But we know what we know, right? Yes. Yes. Did, okay. So let me. Okay, let did me our main character, you know. Did Maxine's dude actually get locked? Let me tell you. You know what? Yes, he did. He locked everyone. So all of them were locked. So he knew that. So okay. He, <laughs> he didn't have to worry about his wives. He didn't want... His wives were supposed to be only talking about him, only looking at him. If you are found speaking or another person looking your direction, you're in trouble. So if he hears that, um, locks on is looking in your direction, you're in trouble. So that was the kind of person that, that um, uh, Signor was. Like, he, it's only me. Me and only me. You are my wife. You do as I say. If I say jump, you jump. If I say you don't look that direction, you don't look that direction. You don't talk to anyone. You talk to the other wives. And if you're not talking to me, you're not talking to any other men. That, that was it. But all the wives were, were locked. He went to Sekuru what, what, and he did the he did the do <laughs> he did the do <laughs> <laughs> okay Linda, you say that locking is real my whole thing is okay so so you know that you know there are like two types of locking on this continent there's the well at least in southern and east africa there's the locking of um of whether guy is not able to get it up you know yes. and, and, and and until the locker unlocks and then there's the other locking where, like, when he tries to do anything, he can't get it out because vaginitis, uh, vaginitis, is it? So, yeah. 
what then do you say police way what happens is if you've got a man who absolutely is obsessed with you or whatever or maybe just doesn't want you to see anybody else what he does is he gets you sorted and then you are unable to um uh any time that a he wants to have sex with you he either can't get it up or alternatively he um he he gets stuck inside you you know and then until the locker until the person who's locked in either yeah. situation the person who's locked needs to come and unlock or say all right i'm undoing this power so this is this is something this is african science you know it's the type of stuff we can do although we can't kill our dictators but anyway that's beside the point so <laughs> So my whole thing is um what do you say to somebody who's like you know what thank you for what you just said but this is unbelievable uh i think it's unrealistic it's it's a, it's an unrealistic storyline that a guy who's healthy and whatever can't get it up he's able to get it up all the other times but can't get it up when you know he meets this 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 woman because she has been locked what do you say to that I think for me for a very long time I also didn't believe it until I met someone who was actually locked not that I was uh, you know trying to do anything or I was but I saw her the way she was this and I asked so for me it was like I I didn't know it was possible like for me I was just like ah come on guys they must be a medical you know I also didn't believe it but I think sometimes the same way that when when i think there's a lot of things that happen in africa that people don't believe because we just like africans can, people cannot be that powerful because if we're that powerful why are we want to using those powers to to make a change you know um mm. but i think sometimes it's I, i can't there's no way i can i can convince a person um for me i just felt if i write about it maybe people can start researching about it and and looking for maybe videos because i've i've seen videos where people are stuck and people have died and i've seen mm. I've, i've stories of people where you just see like there's there's nothing there or and and the one where the guy it just doesn't go up and this guy has has got no it has never it has never happened to them like this is the mandingo of the village like every time <laughs> sudden he can't get it up so so for me i don't know how to convince people on 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 the happenings of it because, but but for me the only way that i was convinced was because i actually met someone and i saw how distressed she was how she was crying like she, it was she was beside herself and i didn't know what to do and for a very long time i was like what like what happened and i was trying to ask and she, what i i think i put it lightly because i just said he his what his thing he couldn't go up but with her it was freakier than that because it was like you know it was like a <laughs> guys i don't know how to describe <laughs> doctor and love please 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 put some respect in nollywood's name hey nigeria was one of the first countries to become independent so anyway uh and when i'm zulu you, you've got vuka vuka so why are you saying you only thought it happened in nollywood movies and come I on <laughs> you there's know no, come no, on it happens it's african <laughs> science oh there's like <laughs> tutorial actually it's not even african science it's just science because we're in africa yeah totally you know uh but 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 do you do you think though that sometimes it can be psychological because i i'm i'm really convinced that sometimes people think believe certain things like mm-hmm. this woman maybe she she was told that this guy locked her maybe he just told her he locked her and he didn't even lock her and then mm-hmm. she went and she told she told her lover or maybe she tensed up while they were making out and then yeah you know i don't know like i, I think for me i i won't even like even when i was writing i think for a very long time i did try to do like research to say what is the scientific um explanation why like the the woman is is closed like now like you can't get in like why can't the guy get in and then there's a condition but then now i'm thinking okay fine so why isn't the guy going up but then now what this woman said it was like this the man 
he literally like ran away because he was just like it's it's um what you <laughs> now Mandingo of the village is that your next title <laughs> because, because I think it's got a very potential title man you know <laughs> And now we've come to the important festival question. Right. Yes. Right. So here we are. <laughs> On the 20, 24th, 25th of of July, uh, our girl crush and book a winner, Bernard and Everisto, stated that she has sex eight times a day when she's not feeling horny how horny were you when you were writing this and how many times did you have sex per day okay for me i okay <clears throat> let me put it like this i'm not gonna confirm or deny what bernadette everisto was saying all i'm saying for in my case i just i just went through a lot of batteries that's all i'm saying if you know what i mean i went through a lot of batteries like yeah i went through a lot of batteries during that time because yeah you know i was being um i had to uh, the battery operated brother was doing the thing because my partner wasn't available so i had assistance i don't remember how many times because sometimes i would pass out like it was literally like <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the batteries. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I can't unhear this. Now I'm just thinking. Um, I feel like I should just send you like a whole lot of batteries now. But then I'm not sure whether they'll be real or they'll be like made in uh, certain places or whatever. But I feel like I should send you batteries, sis. You know? But okay, I promise next time when I see you, when I'm in Joburg next Battery is coming up. <laughs> How, Doctor Ndlovu? You actually, you actually need uh, the actual word. She went through a lot of batteries. Yes. Oh, BC wants to know. Did did it ever break? No, I know. Okay, so I went. It, it, I, Okay. Okay. So wait. 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 Before you go about, uh, before you before before you answer that, uh, I think what we'd like to know is, um, you you also mentioned that you passed out. Did you not get electrocuted? What happened? Like, you know, you passed out and then the battery went out or what? Uh, it's rewind. You know, there will be sometimes that the, the, there's too much power. Like, ugh, guys, I I can't. <laughs> My life. <laughs> when I wake up, guys, you know the writing is like on another level. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Now which 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 brand of batteries? Because you might have been using like cheap whatever. Can you tell us the brand so that somebody who has better batteries can send you? Guys, any any you can think of. I was going through so if, if at the time I find the, I, I don't remember the, the name of so the, there's the Energizer, there's the, um, there's Duracell, Duracell, all of them. I won't even like, like I, I was trying, I was trying all of them. I was just trying all of them. Like which one will last long. Did you try to watch a quality? Here's a trick. Did you try to like, um, and this is a trick from way back. Did you try to put them outside in the sun and then they heated up? I, dude, I tried it. I tried it. <laughs> Guys, like <laughs> so that they could recharge. <laughs> this segment was brought to you by the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Um, and I think on that note, I'm going to have to ask you, yeah. 
Can you can you can you please just like read from that little section where they try <laughs> to get it on the first time when you know like everything is ready. Okay, let me let me look for that part. Um do you even remember okay, so when they try and then yeah, and then the okay, okay, let me look for it. Um, and then yeah, and then yeah. <laughs> okay, so that was where is it? Um okay. Okay, I found it. Okay. <clears throat> what page again is it? At, it's page 130. It's it's page from 137, so chapter 14. Yeah, all right. Chapter 14, 137. By the way, guys, if you are in uh, South Africa, you can get this book from uh, Afroculture. They send it to you. And if you are outside of South Africa, I think you are in Kenya, um, Prestige Books will be making a plan to get this book. So page 137, is it, Makanaka? Yeah. Um, okay. So do you want me to read the whole chapter? It's three pages. Or do you want, can I just start? No, man. I just want you to, 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 to get when they're almost, you know, getting okay. warm because okay. our so time I'll, is almost getting shady. Okay. I'll so the bottom of page 138, where it says, I started to panic. Fantastic. I started to panic. Mm. Yeah. I started to panic a little when I felt his hand gently pull, pulling down my panties. It had been a very long time since anyone else had seen what was going on down there. Only an experienced hand would have known how to maneuver its way around, uh, around. I was distracted from this thought by his tongue circling my breast. I relaxed and started to enjoy the moment. There was only one thing on my mind. Tamuka and I needed to become one. My neck, my back, my neck and back arced. I felt just how hard he was as his member brushed against my hip. I closed my eyes again as his fingers gently stroked my wetness. His, breath, his breathing was heavy. My heart was pounding and I felt as though my body was going to explode. Wait, he said as he stood up. I got a full view of his nakedness and his impressive hardness. Krishi never told me they came in that size, I thought to myself. Excitement and panic were burning trials of fire throughout my body. Tamuka took out a box of condoms from the wardrobe and smiled as he brought his dark, sweaty, chiseled body back towards the bed. I couldn't take my eyes off his as he opened the box, took out one condom, then put the box on one side of the table. He tore the packet open with his teeth and took out the thin sheath, which he placed on the head of his manhood before gently pulling it down his chaft. He kissed me again, his fingers resuming the sensational stroking from before. I closed my eyes and opened my legs wider and Tamuka positioned himself between them. My whole being was ready for the grand entrance for that one moment in life when two really become one. Moments later, as I lay naked next to Tamuka, still wet and feeling very humiliated, the words, you are mine until death. If I can't have you, no one will, rang in my head. Could those words have anything to do with what did not happen. At that very moment, I realized that my quest for freedom was far from over. It had only just begun. Um, sorry, not all writers say member. Guys, it's only Makanaka because, you know, she told you she went through two different Christian whatever. The rest of us say penis. <laughs> she, 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 she had a moment as as seventh day adventist and then there was also like the other christian with christmas so I please <laughs> how bissy says she needs smelling salts <laughs> ah. <coughs> okay so 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 you guys you've just had a bit of a tease um, so please, this, this is the book to get Afroculture, www.afroculture.co.za, I believe you can get it. And, um, you know, hopefully in Kenya, you'll be able to get it at prestige books in the next few weeks. 
um, or so, please let us know from your publisher. So the other thing, there are also some very, despite the very playful nature of, 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 of your writing, there are also some very serious issues that you bring in. You bring in domestic violence. Um, you bring in sisterhood. Um, yeah, and then there's that thing. Um, small houses. Yeah. Small houses. Can we have that conversation about that before we finish? Okay, so for me... Um, I, I needed to have, I needed I needed to get in the head of a small house. I, I really needed, mm. I, I really needed to find out what this person, who this person is, who this person could be. I'm not saying that's how all, all of them are, who this person could be. And I think I, I just thought of the worst case scenario of why someone would be in that situation. And that's why in a very funny way, I, I sympathize with, with Tendekai as well. As much as she mm. was like, yeah, she was an ATM. Um, and, and, um, I actually like Tendakai, you know? She's like, she's like a, she's like a woman in, in, uh, she's a character in, I don't know whether you know the Facebook group Small House Stories. Yes. yes. <laughs> she's a character, in, she's a character from there, man. <laughs> yes. so for me, I, I like Tendakai. Yeah. So, so for me, I think, I, I needed, I kind of like needed to say, you know what, sometimes it's, are they, I'm not saying that they're not, they're not, I wasn't, as much as I wasn't trying to put her in a good light, I also wanted to just get in her head to say, okay, what happened? What's the backstory about, of, of what's Tedekai's backstory? Why, what is her belief system? So, so for her, it's like any man, because her father, she's got daddy issues. So for her, and at, at, at a certain point when her stepmother doesn't accept her, she ends up, this man says to her, you've got the... But, 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 I, but I also like that, I think, uh, mm -hmm. because what you did was you didn't, you didn't pit, you know, in that particular narrative, you didn't pit two women off against each other. It so yeah. often happens yeah. when any stories of like small house and whatever happens, you know? And, and, and I really liked that you took that angle because a lot of, a lot of people would not take that angle, you know? Yeah. Like, particularly because when now you're a big house. You know what? <laughs> that, that's a story. That, that, hold up, hold up. That's a story. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I think for me, I, I, I'm just tired of that narrative. I'm tired. Like, I, I don't like... I hate seeing women like on Facebook. You see, find these women. Two women are fighting, and then the guy is just standing there, like, okay, whoever wins, and then whoever wins, it doesn't matter who wins. He's gonna pick whoever that he wants. But you guys have like, you've got scars, the the weave. Like, I just hate that narrative. I I don't I don't get it. Like, because for me, if you're married to someone, that person is is, is their their actions. They are the ones who are accountable to you. The other person, you, whatever, even if they knew that you were there, your person is accountable to you. So I, I, I hate the fact that women always had to fight. Oh my gosh, you are taking my man. Like as if men are small children or it's, it's a prize. I don't like the fact that it, it always seems like men are the prize. Like he's the prize that we have to fight over. I, I didn't want that narrative. And I, I, I'm, I'm so tired of it. I'm, I'm just so tired of it. I don't. Even if you said, if, if, if people, when they send those videos where people are, like, I do not watch where too many women are fighting. I'm just like. To watch them. I know, right? No, like for me, a man is not a prize. It's not a prize. Like, value yourself. Talk to your person. If you can't resolve it, you know, find another way. Don't fight the other, the other party. Um, it, it's, it's, for me, it's just tired. It's women we need to have to value ourselves more, I think. Um, and as the big house, like you're saying, I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the one to, I'm not going to fight you. I'm, I'm just going to deal with my person. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> time on, All right. Uh, yeah. Another question on your journeys. Um, you uh, go from accounting, then you, then fashion, then uh, you're still doing fashion, right? And then, and then, and then, and then, and then writing, like, you know, what did your mother say 
Makanaka. Because you left <laughs> being an accountant in to like bank. do these things. Not even in any place. In a bank. In a proper bank. A whole bank. Someone must leave a job. So yeah. <laughs> My, my parents, my, my family, everyone struggled with that decision. People didn't understand. But for me, it made sense. Because I think sometimes when, when your vision, when what you see or what you know about of yourself, when you come, to, when you meet Makanaka, because I think when I met Makanaka, for me, I was like, this accounting thing is not going to work. I left my job. I didn't have anything. I didn't know. I just knew that I was going to write a book. And, and I think for at, at a certain point, the the book and the fashion thing were not it was not uh maybe it will work out it had to work out because i did not accounting was off the table and taking that kind of leap of faith i think i i, I just found myself I'm, I'm i'm swimming i'm i'm there are sharks everyone is just trying to get at me and it was not an option failing was not an option i had to make it and i had to bring out this story because i i knew like it was so clear for me. It was so clear for me. I, I knew that this book was, had to happen. So very difficult. Um, it, it was a decision that took, I think, 10 years for me to, to come to it. Um, and another six years for me to actually act on it. To execute it. Yeah. So, um, but it, it, it's something that I will never, like, I will never look back. Like, for me, I, I'm an accountant by uh, qualification, but that's just, that, that's where it ends. Um, I'm a storyteller. I love what I'm doing now. And yeah, onwards and upwards. I will suffer as a writer. I will not go back to accounting. Yeah. Because that's okay. not who I am. Yeah. Given, given your professional experience, though, um, are, you, are you open to doing taxes for writers? I've, I've, thought, about, <laughs> I've thought about that. I, I, I won't even lie. Like, times, when times are tough, I've, I've thought about that, like, you know what, you know what, maybe I should do taxes. But I, I think for me all the time, I like, every time I think of numbers, I'm just like, it, it, it kills, there's a certain kind of creativity that, like, there's a certain energy that comes out of me that I, I, I feel like I need to just keep and use it for my, for my creative uh, writing, for scripts or whatever idea that I'm working on. Um, so I, I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I don't know. I don't think I would. No. Dr. Andlovo wants to know what kept you going after you resigned from FNB? I think it was just my, it was just my, 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 like for me, I had a clear vision. Everyone else didn't see it. I had a clear vision. For me, I saw how it was going to happen. I was even winning awards, guys. I was, you know, I was winning awards. I could even see myself like, eh, hey, Makanaka won this thing. So for me, I, I had I had this vision. The stories were not like for me. This is not the end of it. So, because now I'm into script writing, I'm I'm into uh, making television as well. So for me, the the storytelling is it has just begun. So the book is just the beginning. I'm going to write some more. Uh, right now, I don't know what it is, but for me, it's not even just about the book. It's about telling stories through film, through whatever other medium, but it's telling stories. Even if it's just me telling stories, ask my sisters, I can tell stories for days. So for me, I really just my, actually my appreciate you saying that because um, I think too often people just assume that being a writer means writing books. Yeah. And I like the fact that you're talking about diversification, being able to tell stories, whether for film or stage or other mediums you know, yeah. so, yeah. or media. So I really, really appreciate that you're doing that. And, and how's that working for you? As Dr. Phil would say. I love, I love, love it. I've, I, I, I did a, a, an adaptation of the book uh, in, the, in the form of a play. I'm just looking for, for sponsors to just make it into a proper stage play, but it went very well. That's the time that I was in Zim. It went very well. So I think that the play made my parents like, like, I think everything changed after the play for my parents. They were just like, oh my gosh, okay, now we get it. They, they understood it because they were on the, in the front seat as much as there was some uncomfortable stuff, like the member stuff, <laughs> they got it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you put the word member in the manuscript? Because you knew your parents were going to read. My, mother, is my a... mother said to me when she first read the madam, she was like, I really enjoyed the book, but your language. And I was like, mom, it wasn't written for you. <laughs> anyway, I think it's almost.
almost time up and it has been amazing. Thank you so much, everybody. Please meet me here at, um, at 18 GMT, 19 West African time, Nigerians, 20 hundred Central African time, South Africans and Zimbabweans and Zambians and Malawians, and 2100 East African time, Tanzanians, Ugandans, and the other people. Okay, <laughs> Kenyans. Um, I will be then with Margaret Busby. Thank you all so much uh, for being part of this festival. For the last five seasons, I think I will miss a lot of you guys every time at the end of the month. Thank you so much, Makanaka, for being part of an amazing audience, but also for being part of an amazing guest. Um, our amazing guest. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Zuki. Thank you, everyone. All right. Ciao. Yeah, bye. Shout. <laughs>